Hey everybody, it's Father Mark Mary with a little special announcement. So since 2014, Ascension has been putting out free content here on the platform Ascension uh, presents. Myself, I have been really blessed to represent uh, the Friars by being a part of the team. And it's been a huge source of grace for the community. Our, our vocations are actually like kind of like record breaking, back up, doing re really, really well. And, and a lot of the feedback I get from people is that they're just really, really blessed and uh, have really been helped by the videos that I'm putting out, but also by by the whole team. It just it just costs a lot. And, and I know that um, it's just worth being out there. So you can go to ascensionpress.com forward slash support. Uh, if you want to support Ascension Presents, again, that's ascensionpress.com forward slash support. If you want to give a little bit, uh, it can be a way to give in gratitude. If you, you're, uh, somebody you know has been really helped by the content out here. And I understand if like, you can't help financially, that's just the reality that, that a lot of people might find themselves in. But of course, if you could continue to pray for myself, the whole audience, and the whole Ascension team, we would be very, very grateful. Praying that you're having a blessed Advent. Thank you so much. The, the demand for more Sisters of Life, the great success <laughs> of their videos has left people asking, am I ever gonna be satisfied? Amen. Hey, I am Father Mark Mary. And I'm Sister Mary Grace. And I'm a Franciscan Friar of the Renewal. And I'm a Sister of Life. And this is Ascension Presents. So Sister Mary Grace, <laughs> can, we, can we talk about this question yeah. of the desires and satisf satisfaction? Yes. What, 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 what can we hope for? Yeah, because we all have them, right? Like if we are real with ourselves, we actually have massive desires. We are created. We know this as, as Catholics, as followers of Jesus, that he promises us the world. He promises us eternity. He promises us real love. Uh, and if we take seriously Jesus's promises, uh, then we're taking our own desires seriously too, that I am made for love. Uh, and the truth is God doesn't tease us and he doesn't break his promises either. So will I ever be satisfied? Yes, Jesus promises us. Yes. Um, so we're going to look at this in three particular ways. And that is Will I ever be satisfied? Number one, I think it's more about giving our hearts the mic, you know, giving ourselves the space to actually listen to these kind of desires that are going on. Number two is asking ourselves and giving ourselves the freedom and space to ask, like, what makes my heart tick? You know, what are these actual desires? Uh, what do I like? You know, how do I come alive? Just being aware of uh, my unique uh, capacity to love. Number three, uh, will my desires be satisfied? And that's a one word answer, Jesus. Because at the heart of every desire is our desire for Jesus and everything that he promises us. Uh, so the answer is yes. Uh, and the answer is Jesus. Uh, Sister Mary Grace, I love the idea. First time hearing it about giving our hearts the mic. Yeah. What does that look like? Yeah. I think it's just a matter of being aware that, our, that we have hearts. <laughs> that I have a heart, that I have longings, that I have desires that I need met. Uh, getting real with what I need, uh, being aware of how my heart actually has these uh, longings and desires to be known, to be loved, to love, uh, for intimacy, to be part of a, a, a community, to belong, uh, to have a home that I'm heading towards. You know, these are all legitimate desires of the human heart. So one, just acknowledging, I got them. <laughs> I need them answered and I can't answer them on my own. I need, I need others. I need someone who's going to walk with me to get there, to uh, satisfy those desires. So one, just being aware of them, which makes me think about uh, a time in my life before I was a sister. Father, my biggest dream before I entered the convent was I just wanted to make the Olympics. You know, I was like, if I make the Olympics, I think that's like the biggest desire fulfilled. I was like, that's, that, that was my standard of greatness. I was like, if I make the Olympics set, I'm, I'm gold, life set up. Uh, so I was kind of working towards that in my life. And uh, just before I did get serious about um, actually asking Jesus what he wanted for my life. I really had an opportunity to step forward in that way. But then I also went on a trip to come and visit the sisters as the Lord was calling my heart closer. And I experienced a powerful time in prayer that was really just quite simple, but life changing. And that was bringing this very desire to Jesus. You know, what about my desire to, to be an Olympian, to represent my country, uh, to have this kind of meaning in my life? and Jesus reminded me or awoke a deeper desire in my heart that I wasn't even aware of at that point, that I didn't uh, even know I had a deeper desire than that one until Jesus showed me that uh, I actually want for him, that I want to love him uh, in, a, in an exclusive way. I want to belong to him. 
And he actually was calling me to this way of life, that he put it on my heart, that he created me in this particular way to love. And I had no idea about that um, until I brought it to Jesus and he showed me what I was created for. And it wasn't until I got home from that trip and I told one of my good friends, you know, that whole Olympic thing might, might not work out. And she said to me, she was like, but you've been wanting that your whole life long, you know, this good desire to represent your country. And I was, it was shocking even to myself that I said to her, I was like, you know what? I want this more. I want this more. And uh, this is what Jesus does when we bring our desires to him. He, he's aware of them. He knows them, even the smaller ones. Uh, and what he does is he constantly awakens us to ones that are even greater, that potentially desires before lead us to. Uh, and we don't lose anything when we bring our desires to Jesus. All he does is either reawaken them or show us ones that were perhaps dormant or not yet alive until we bring to him. Mm -hmm. and, and I love this story and I love this, this phrase again that you use of like the Lord doesn't tease us with our desires. Yes. And yeah. right, and I think that's something that it's good for us to, to name and to understand, yeah. right? Because there can be, okay, I have this deep desire, but it's not being fulfilled yeah. or it's not being fulfilled in the time or the way we think. And so then our kind of quick response is like, Lord, like, why did you, if you're not, if you don't want to uh, fulfill this, why did you give me this right. desire, right? Mm -hmm. But but at the time, like the Lord actually knows our deepest desires in our hearts. And, and sometimes he, he's trying to, to bring us to another place and in his yes. time and, and revealing us something even deeper of who he wants to be for us yeah. and who he desires uh, us to be for him. Um, but also, I think just this idea of of giving him the giving our hearts the mic as well. Yes. Of uh, Psalm eighty four talks about how on on their hearts are written the roads to Zion. Mm. This idea that they do have to be purified and guided by certainly the gospel, mm -hmm. but there's a real way in which our desires are given to us by God, and right. that these are roads that are bringing us to Him. Yes. You know, and so so there is there is a real importance I think for for knowing our hearts with the Lord, and to paying attention to and listening to our desires with confidence that actually if, if, we're, if we're faithful and we follow them, you know, as the Lord uh, kind of like morally, right? Yes. Uh, these ultimately can lead us um, to Him. Yeah. So number two, like actually giving our hearts the space and freedom to ask that question of like, how do I come alive? You know, how, how do I, uh, what makes my heart tick? You know, um, is it being part of a big group? Is it uh, expressing myself in a certain way? You're know, like, what do I like to actually create? And just giving ourselves the freedom to bring that question to Jesus. You know, Lord, how have you created my unique heart to love? How have you designed me in a way uh, that I'm going to come alive? Uh, because the pressure is not on us, actually. You know, Jesus has a unique plan for every one of us. And uh, it's not a matter of us determining it or figuring it out, but actually discovering the love he has placed first in our heart. Just giving our hearts permission to ask, how am I called to love Jesus? How have you created my heart to love? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what's, what's interesting with this is sometimes I think uh, we have to give people again permission mm -hmm. to actually like reverence and pay attention to their yes. desires. Yep. Um, Cause I think there's a lot of us who are well-intentioned and well-formed, but uh, we, we can kind of be afraid of, uh, we don't want to be selfish. Yes. And so the question of what do I want here can be felt as selfish. Uh, and so sometimes there's a paying attention to like what's, what's needed or duties. And that mm -hmm. is, while that's very, very important, it's all, it's kind of integrated. Mm -hmm. So like if, uh, if someone calls the friars and it's like, okay, like, um, okay, cool. Why are you calling us? Yeah, I just feel like, you know, giving myself to the Lord is like really important thing. Be people need priests. Okay, cool. And it's like, do you like, do you want to live in New York? Do you want to work with the poor? Do you want to live in community? And if they're like, no, all, like, I really love to study and I want to teach and I would really love to work in higher education and like uh, teach at a university and get a doctorate. Like, well, maybe, you know, this isn't the place for you, right? Maybe right, pay right, attention right. to those desires yes. and follow them and have confidence in that. And, and of course, that's like, I just think there's a lot of areas in which certainly we have to temper them and, and allow them to be informed mm -hmm. by, by the gospel. But also just to not not every time uh, moment of asking like what do I want is a moment of selfishness. Absolutely. There's ways in which that as well is God given and and, and ways yeah. that He desires to, to draw us and to guide us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And I think that's like basically the third point that we're moving mm -hmm. towards is that like this is actually the kind of stuff Jesus wants to have a conversation about. You know, this is this is exactly the place that we bring to him, like, you know, Lord, how have you created me? And also not to forget to ask the question of like, what are your desires for me, Lord? Actually, to, uh, that God wants to listen to our hearts and then for us to give him the space and listen to him, like, what desires do you have for me right here? Or 
uh, what are you going to do about this desire I have? Or what, Lord, now do I do with desire? Or, or how have you created me to desire that actually this conversation is the very thing that we, we can bring to Jesus that he wants to know about? Um, because when we're a, a, aware of what makes us alive, how Jesus has created us to flourish and to give ourselves uh, and to receive his love, the more alive we are. It actually gives us life when we're aware of what we're desiring and actually resting in the truth that Jesus is constantly wanting to fulfill us and give us opportunities uh, to spend our love, to give it away in a way that is unique, uh, in a way that is unrepeatable, in a way that is particular to every one of us. And each one of us have an expression of, of love, not only to be loved by God in a unique way, but also to give ourselves in a unique way. So it's beautiful to be aware of uh, how am I called to love and what I bring is good and unique uh, and it's necessary. We need it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The Lord, um, these desires for a mission, the desire for for love, for intimacy, yes. for purpose, for understanding, yeah. for truth, for mercy, for salvation, for confidence. All of those are not, like, God's not teasing us with those desires, yes. right? Amen. And that it really and truly uh, in Him, we can find satisfaction of all of these and, and uh, ultimately uh, for all eternity, which Amen. is kind of, which is the goal. Yeah. Which is good news. <laughs> which is very good news. Yeah. So, um, sorry about the Olympic team. Yeah. I, I think they, hopefully they did okay. Don't worry. This, ki this life keeps us going. That's huh? it. That's <laughs> it. All right. Well, thanks for everybody. Thanks for watching. Look forward to being with you again next week. Remember, we are pilgrims on this earth. Somos peregrinos. Poco a poco. Little by little. Vamos a We're going to make it. Good to be with you. <laughs>